I met up with, uh, I called her, and she, the bitch of Buchenwald. And most of you probably don't even know what that is. Buchenwald was a German not concentration camp in Germany, and the commandant was called Elsa Koch. And she was the meanest commandant of all of the, the, the concentration camp, and he's called the bitch of Buchenwald. That's what I call my, see, my first wife died of, of uh, sickle cell. The love of my life was Jackie, which we built the stores together. It was 24 years we were together. Years that I cherish. I always just, you know, anyhow. So anyhow, I met the, the third one, and she was full of life and vigor and all that, but she was all for herself. She's 25 years younger than me. And I'll never forget the time she told me, women always play the game. Aren't you, aren't you lucky? You married a woman 25 years? I said, no, you're lucky. Because you bought nothing. I, I'm the man. You're living with me. You're the one that's riding on me. I'm not riding on you. So how am I lucky? Boy, you should see her face. Now, if they play the game now, I'm supposed to be beholden. Because she's 25 younger than, years younger than me. I said, listen, let me tell you something. You didn't have changing doors when you met me. Now you run around here with your fur coats and all that from my pocket. Where you? And I'm going to be, you, your blessing to me is you're younger than me? Oh, that killed her. Oh, I remember that she wanted to choke my, because she swore I was going to say, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, anyhow, I said, the, I, I, I was so in the dumps from bringing up with Jackie. I said, I got to move. I got to, I got to, I got to move. I was going to stay in Inglewood. So my friend said, I love that house. I'll buy it from you. I said, okay. So I said, well, where am I going to go? And then I, told, I called Joe Weeder. That's my man. And I said, Joe, you know. I don't know. I said, I don't think I'm going to stay in Jersey. I'm going to sell this store. Joe said, sell the store and come on out of here with me. I said, Joe, he said, come on out of here with me. You know, so, you know, you, what do you, you should have done that a long time ago. And I said, well, okay, there was a venture. So I moved out here, uh, well, about 24 years ago. 25, ooh, the ooh, it gets me jittery. And, um, my first store I opened was in the marina, Marina Del Rey. Wow, that was a store. Boy, we, I never did. The, the people, the, the wealthy people that live in that area, we really boomed there. Oh, boy. It was, but then, of course, the second wife, she was embezzling my money, so I had to close that one. And, uh, and that was, boy, I, that was almost as good as the stores in New York. Not as good, but almost. The stores in New York, boy, man. Twenty thousand dollars a week was chump change, really. I mean, uh, and, and in the main store, it was just uh, fantastic. I was on top of the world, just going back a little less before I came to California. So I came to California. The Marina Del Rey store was terrific. Then I said, uh, Jesus, we, I got to close down this store, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, my friend George said, Why don't you open another store? I said, Oh, okay, I'll open another store. So I opened a store, uh, you don't know California, there's no sense explaining the location. But I opened it to a store across from uh, Trader Joe's, and that did very well. Then they, uh, and I loved the business, I loved communicating with people. I met all kinds of movie personalities, and, and, and uh, uh, even, at, oh, okay, let's, uh, you know, I, I get, my head gets to spinning, and I start to thinking, and I don't know what the hell I see. I don't know what order I say things in, but you know, when you're talking impromptu like this, without a script, because I don't have any scripts with this, I'm not reading anything, I'm just telling you from my me, it's my feeling, my heart and all that. So a lot of times when I'm talking to you, I may repeat myself or I may go back, and I do that because the brain. The brain's a lot of times ahead. Impromptu is rough. You see a lot of these people, they're talking to you. They got the script they're reading. I'm not reading. I'm just telling you as it come out of this brain. But then I moved. I, 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 that was a, the, the store that I moved to when I moved, after I had a divorce from, from number three, which I don't have. I mean, she was, you know, I don't condemn any. She was good. She was fun. But she was all for herself. And that's why we, it, things didn't work out. Okay, so I moved uh, to Sherman Oaks, and I opened a store uh, across from Trader Joe's. But that did very well. But then the bank took over that section where we were, and I moved here. This is the last store 
uh, on Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks. And, uh, and I feel now, you know, I've been doing this. This is a, I tell you, you got to love this. I had friends that went in, in this business and they didn't last a year. You got to love it. I love dealing with people. I love informing people. And we get, oh, I mean, if I can name if, uh, the list of, of very famous people that come, that's come in the store. And the movie actors that they tell their friends, you know, the guys in CSI, Alyssa Milano, um, or so many. I, I even start to go back to think Barry Bonds, uh, oh God, uh, Cheech and Chong. I mean, I, they, all these. Oh, I don't even want to start listening because I just get the, there's so many guys. Because you know why? I engage people like that. I mean, Barry Bonds sat here. He's a home run, top home run hitter of, of, the, of, the, of the first, more home runs than anybody in history. He sat here, and that's why we have stools in front of the county here. He sat here for two and a half hours talking about uh, nutrition, baseball, his attitude, and, uh, uh, and, and his uh, so-called drug use. Because I'm, I like, I'm interested. I'm like, I tune in on the head. You know, and I just enjoy it. But that was, um, now I'm uh, at the stage now that I had enough of behind the counter. Had enough of talking over the counter, you know. I, I want to, now what I want to do now is to see, I want to get, I, I want to see what a geezer can do when he can concentrate on training. I'm obsessed with that because I have that muscle memory. I have, uh, Almost 60 years of muscle memory. The body don't forget. You start that fire, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a small flame, but it's still burning. You start that fire and you, and you say to yourself, that fucking 80 year old man, what are you doing? Well, you see, you talk about the average 80 year old man. How many 80 year old men were training for over 60 years? Now you got one hand with five fingers cut off. And I could feel my body aching to, come back and I can't wait to get back. That's why that will be my swan song. When I'm able to concentrate on the body and see how I can build it again. Um, that's what I'm doing now. That's why I'm leaving the store and I'm going to, uh, you know, pace myself now and, and, and trigger my ego by seeing what I can do with this body loaded with muscle memory. Let me tell you something. When you train for over 65 years, your body has a lot of memory. And that may, may sound strange to you, but you'd be surprised. It's the most intriguing thing I've ever found about the body. Once you train that body and it's trained deep into its core and its chemistry, you never lose it. The outward appearance you may lose, but the ability to regenerate is so quick to blow your mind. You can't do it in a year. You don't build that kind of muscle memory in two years. It takes years of conditions. It's almost like a, 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 some kind of a, what do they call it, a genetic disease. You pick up a lays dormant for years, and then when you get a wet and it blossoms. But muscle memory is just lays dormant. And I know it. I can feel it. And that's what frustrates me. So that's, that's why I want to do this, get away from this day-to-day -day in the store. Because you can't do that in the store. By the time I get out of the store, turn around, it's time to go to bed. Now I want to just concentrate on training. And then I'm going to unveil myself. And you guys see that geezer was right. Because, you know, I take a quick pose now, and I say, not too bad for doing nothing. I haven't trained in two, two months. I've done a thing. And you lose, and I lost a lot of muscle. That's the thing. People say you lost weight. I lost muscle, <laughs> you know. But gentlemen, that is the story.